Welcome. So one of the things that you need if you're to work on electronics is a good uh, soldering iron. So I have used um, for about 20 years these soldering irons by our particular manufacturer. I'm not actually sure how to pronounce the name. I used to call it XYtronic. Lately I've been calling it Zytronic. It's spelled X-Y-T-R-O-N-I-C. Um, I believe it's made in Taiwan. Uh, yep, made in Taiwan. But it's uh, it's been a good unit. So this was the first one I got. And this was, I'm saying, around 20 years ago. And it has served me very well over the years. It's a nice temperature-controlled soldering station. You had a little uh, dial to set the temperature, a readout to tell you what temperature you had, switch to go back and forth. Kind of plasticky, this old one but uh, very high quality. I never had any problems with this. It was always a good comfortable iron to use and I got many many hours. But I decided it was time for something newer with a little bit higher wattage so I ordered this new LF3000 model. So the LF3000, I'll turn it on in a moment, it has a digital display, some buttons here to go up and down, a set button that lets you go through various menus, power switch down there at the bottom, on the back, it's got a nice removable uh, cord with your standard plug, uh, fuse, and this is kind of handy. There's a little jack there where you can uh, plug in a grounding cable in case you uh, want to ground yourself while you're working on uh, static sensitive devices. And before I crank it up, let's look at the actual iron. You can see it's pretty small compared to my old 20-year-old uh, model. They, they've made some improvements in size and it comes with this nice uh, separate stand so this is nice because you can push that piece way far away and keep this where you're working um, and one of the other things that's nice about it is they made a change to the tips so you unscrew this you can unscrew this and your tip comes out and I don't know if you can see on the video but this tip is actually hollow inside and there's a little uh, rod that sticks out here. Now I believe this rod is the temperature sensor for the uh, for the soldering iron. So rather than having a temperature sensor that's back there behind the tip, it actually extends way up inside of it and that should give you uh, more accurate uh, temperature sensing. It just screws together. It's got this uh, nice screw-on connector down here for plugging the iron itself in. It's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six pin connector. The old uh, old soldering iron I had used to be a five pin connector, so they've added one more pin to do something. So let's turn it on and you can see uh, how quickly it fires up. So I have it uh, preset for 360 degrees and there it is counting up to temperature turn off the light so the display is a little bit better visible and it's up to its uh, 360 degrees now there's a there's a little light that should blink on and off as it uh, oscillates up and down from its set point so right now it's got down to its set point of 360 uh, there was a little blink a little blink that will happen every so often is when it is uh, running power to the uh, to the iron so it's good iron, you know, I can I can lower the temperature, um, if you push and hold, it goes down very fast, you push and hold, it goes up very fast. All around a good soldering iron. So one of the other nice things about it, it does have an automatic shutoff feature, it's actually got two stages to the automatic shutoff. In the first stage, if you uh, if you let it sit for 20 minutes, it will go down to uh, it'll turn itself down to 100 degrees in a power save mode. Then all you have to do is just pick it up. I don't know how it knows if it has like a mercury switch in there or something else, but somehow it knows when I pick it up, and it'll go back up to uh, 360 degrees. In the second stage of the automatic shut off, it at uh, 40 minutes it will actually turn the whole iron off power completely down and you'll have to uh, cycle power switch to turn it back on. So I've, I've tested the uh, the 20 minute shutdown and it worked as expected. So I believe it's uh, it's 90 watt iron which is uh, 
good wattage and able to uh, you know to keep itself hot as you're uh, soldering small connections or big connections and uh, it uh, has quite a temperature range so this is in centigrade I can go all the way up to 520 I really don't want to have it that hot so let me run it back down to about 360 degrees and I've uh, since getting it I've soldered uh, several several projects and it's worked out great the tips are high quality they say there's additional plating on them for handling uh, lead free solder it's got you know a nice little uh, brass sponge that is uh, typical of, of the higher end soldering irons anymore and I think the price for it was about 130 140 bucks which is a pretty good deal for a soldering iron of this quality and if it lasts me another 30 years like the old one I will be quite pleased so this uh, this case here is not plasticky at all. It feels like uh, feels like nice heavy metal. The whole thing itself is is uh, quite heavy. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just a good uh, soldering iron. The Zytronic or Xytronic LF3000, whatever you want to call it. They also make an LF3500, which I think is even more wattage. Although I don't know why you'd need even more wattage. This is more than adequate to do any kind of work that I should uh, need to do. And I think that is it. Great soldering iron, very happy with it.